So here you have some of the supplies for the coaster project. Uh, prior to starting the video, I did uh, hoop a piece of black cutaway. The reason why I'm using the black cutaway is I want it to be relatively uh, unobtrusive once I finish the project. Uh, you can see that there's like a black lining to this synthetic cork. This is kind of a vinyl material, but it looks like expensive cork, and that's good enough for me for this is a coaster. And um, I had used some 505 spray in the hoop. Um, you can see that I already stitched out a uh, positioning um, mark for the uh, coaster. This will go on top like such. I'll then go over to the machine and stitch this down by repeating this. But I'm going to stitch the initials for the recipient first and then what I'm going to do is go back, stitch the same line, but I'm going to flip this upside down put this to the back, tape it to either side, and then stitch. And that way I don't have the initials stitching through the uh, coaster center back. That'll just be pristine. But I do want the decorative stitches that are around it uh, and the blanket stitch that finally finishes to stitch through all layers. Uh, you might notice that on the um, on this black um, tearaway uh, that there's like a little bit of a white film and that again is from the 505 which is gives us a little tackiness here. Um, I would prefer a uh, black cutaway uh, but I don't have any of that uh, at my fingertips uh, so the tearaway will work okay with this project. But generally when I'm using the cut work tool I prefer a cutaway stabilizer in general. So off camera, I went ahead and embroidered uh, the initials for the recipient. You can see here uh, the tack down line that was just sewn again, and that, of course, uh, tacks this down. I did want to point out the type of thread that I'm using. This is from Designs and Machine Embroidery, Eileen Roche's company, which is a fantastic. Uh, this is a matte thread, and uh, what I have for your viewing pleasure is a metallic, uh, not a metallic, excuse me, this is isochore polyester, which again, lots of times, majority of times, I use this for embroidery unless I don't. Um, for this project, um, I want it to be all natural, and I didn't want like the shine that I get with like a rayon or a polyester thread. So I really like, you know, if you compare, if you compare when I kind of flip this around with the light, you can kind of see how this this thread here, Eileen's thread, because it's a matte, it doesn't have as much shine as a polyester. So a consideration. Uh, the other thing is if you're designing this and you are in your software, you have full sequence control. And it's kind of uh, a thought would be to, to think carefully about the order that you're stitching things out on. Like for my sake, I didn't want um, I didn't want the stitching here for the monograms to go through to the back side. And let me just flip that over. I sprayed this with some 505 spray, and then you can see I used some um, some painters tape, that type of thing, on the back just to secure this. I do need to go back and stitch once again this outer border here, this tack down, to make both pieces behave. Um, as one. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and go forward and back and think I'll think I'll take you over to the machine just so you can see how I'm doing this. But I can resequence things in any path that I want on our Bernina machines. Uh, you can also do the same thing with, uh, with other machines if you're using another machine other than a Bernina. Um, the thing that you do need to uh, be aware of is that you do not have um, you do not have cut work uh, on say like a baby lock um, domestic machine. You do have it on their multi needle machines. Janome also has cut work available. They use four separate needles, which is fine. You can purchase the Bernina uh, cut work tool, which you'll see in a bit. And in place of the uh, the different colored uh, cut work needles that Janome uses, you can certainly put the Bernina tool in there. And then you just need to know what angle. I think it's like black, green, yellow, red. I believe those are the colors. You just need to know what black angle is. And then say black is number one, green is number two, 
etc etc and you just spin it accordingly um, you can also again if if you were not if you did not have a um, a Bernina machine or the cut work tool you can still do the coaster project the the thing is you're just going to be manually cutting out the circle which is it's not it's not a big um, but I do like the cut work tool so I'm going to take you over to the machine and let me just show you kind of what I'm talking about as sequencing and so I hope I'm not making you too dizzy and here we are at my screen yes and I think that's pretty good as far as the focus so I'm in the sewing mode here this is the same regardless of the machine you're on this is not exclusive to Bernina um, what I just finished doing is I had stitched the um, the initial placement line uh, I'm gonna actually go this is to go back this is to go forward in the design I'm gonna go back to the very first it's just asked me to put my hoop on so I always do what my machine tells me so my hoop is on yes okay and so I'm just going to go back to the very first, you can see that's the fourth color, the third color, the second color, the first. So this is the initial tack down. This is initially what I want to stitch. Now, when I go to um, continue with this, the next one is um, going to be the, the first one is like the place placement line. The second color is the tack down. I technically don't have to stitch this again. It would just stitch over the same line that I just stitched. The next guy coming up here is going to be a placement line here. And as I come forward, here are the decorative stitches. So this would be the first thing that I would stitch out. And I'm going to do that kind of in a pink color as opposed to the green um, green lettering. And then as I go to the next color, there's the initials. You can see how I stitched that first you know, after the placement, then I'm going to come, continue to come forward, and this is going to be the um, this is the stabilization line for the cut work tool. And as I come further forward, you see how this is saying cut one. When I get to cut one, I'm going to bring you back because this would be for some of you new information as far as how the cut work tool works. So uh, we'll be back in just a bit. So I uh, I turned the contrast up a little bit on the um, camera to get rid of some of the shadows, but I wanted to point out that I'm ready now to do the cut work part of this uh, project. What I have on the machine is the official cut work plate. It does not come with the tool. It comes as a separate purchase. And the reason why is you can buy the cut work tool, but you might have a 7 series machine, an 8 series machine, a 5 series machine, etc. So the plates are different depending on what the machine is, but the foot and the tool is the same. So the box for the cut work tool looks somewhat like this. Uh, at least it did when I purchased it. It could be different now, and I've had this since it originally came out. But inside here, what you'll see is you'll have two extra blades. You'll have the gizmo, that's the technical term for the cut work tool, and you'll ha have foot 44 uh, C, which I'm going to pull out of this. I'm going to set this aside. Um, this foot is also known as an echo quilting foot. There's like little um, um, cir um, circles around here um, with different radii from the center, so you can echo quilt with this. Notice that there is an eye on this, so the machine will know that you have this specific foot on and you can't trick the system. So don't think you can use a like the embroidery foot with the cut work tool. It'll stop you dead in the tracks. Um, again, the differences between these two plates with the cut work plate, let me get this out of the direct light. Do you see how there's markings with the uh, straight stitch plate? And uh, I'll use this with garment sewing in particular. Um, but the cut work plate itself has no markings on it. I'm going to ask Bernina International if they could explain to me what the difference is because the whole, to me, it measures the same and the machine's not going to know what plate you have on. You do want to tell it, of course. Let me just throw this guy on here um, like such. And then the other thing you want to make sure of, let me kind of get down here and up here. You also want to make sure and zoom in. You see how there's like a number one in the wheel uh, window here? As this works through the design, you'll be put into um, f potentially four different um, 
blade positions. It depends on the shape of the object, but to switch the um, blade to the next position, you simply turn this like so, and now you have a different blade position. To me, and I'm, I'm a Janome owner as well, and I love Janome machines, I would certainly buy the cut work tool and just know like this this might be the black blade this might be the yellow blade this might be the red blade and this might be the green blade number four um, and then just when that color comes up on your Janome machine you just put it to the correct uh, blade position uh, just a friend, friendly warning when you are done using cut work tool more times than not you're on blade position number four It's just the nature of things I would highly recommend that whenever you put the cut work tool on your machine to cut out a new design that you pay close attention to where you are at Because position four is not the same as position one And so you really want to dial this back to the beginning number so the foot needs to be on the plate needs to be on straight stitch plate or the cut work plate uh, and the um, number one needs to be in the window. So let me take you up to the screen itself. Do do, and I'm going to back out just a bit. And so I need to tell the machine what's going on here. And the first thing I want to tell it is that I actually have foot 44C. Do you see how that? automatically came up there that 44c because I'm in the part of the design now where it's asking for cut position number one and it knows that the recommended foot is 44c this based on the technique will tell me what other feet are recommended for this notice you can choose either 44c or get this 44C. Do you think you need to use 44C on this technique? Uh, you're absolutely correct. So 44C is what I have on the machine. The other thing I want to tell the machine is that I have the cut work plate on. Notice that you also have a punch work plate. That's for a different class. The straight stitch plate, the 5.5 and the 9 millimeter, which is your standard plate. So the green check mark means that's what it's on and I'm going to say yes I am ready for this. Notice that it's asking me for a cut position number one which I have here and it's in the window as I just showed you. I'm going to put the um, hoop onto the machine and I want to take you back into the hoop because what's on the screen is not as important now and let me just see if I can get in here a bit Do, do, do. And so I'm taking it back into the hoop because I wanted you to see this is like the decorative blanket stitch that I chose to put in my design. That was not part of Debbie's design, it's just a design choice. This is the tack down or the stabilization run that is done before the actual cutting. The cutting, believe it or not, is going to take place between the stabilization run and where my cursor is. It should be in this like little trough here as it goes around and if life is good and many a times it is um, it won't cut into the blanket stitch because that's how I programmed it but we'll see how things go. So I'm going to come back over to the machine because you need to see this screen. I have everything set up the way I need it to set. Let me back out just a bit. I'm going to go ahead and push the start button and it's asking you, do you have foot 44C on? And I'm going to say, yes, I do. Do you have the cut work plate on? Yes, I do. If you have the straight stitch plate on, I think you're going to be okay. But again, I do need to ask Bernina about this. You could have the 9 millimeter plate on, and if you just say yes, the machine's going to let you stitch. It's the foot that it's particular with because it has the eye on it, and it knows what's going on. Absolutely. Big brother. And so I'm going to come here, and I'm just going to let you see how this thing cuts. This is just going to take a couple of minutes to complete, so I'll leave you just on camera so you can see. It'll go into the different positions of the design that requires blade position one. And then what will happen is uh, it will request blade number two when it stops. I'll turn the dial, I'll push the start button. I won't take you back over to the screen because I pretty much explained what you should be seeing. It's just showing me the next cut position. I have this on number two. 
and then I'm going to go ahead and push go. When I do demos uh, of this, when we're at quilt shows and what have you, um, this is not overly impressive. It just looks like the uh, bar, needle bar going up and down, but it's cutting. Uh, which is kind of miraculous. The big wow is actually when you get to the end and then you just pull this thing out and it's cut perfectly. I'm going to position number three. Cutting circles, I would not consider um, one of the easiest shapes, but if it's like squares and rectangles, I can certainly cut squares and rectangles with a rotary cutter and a ruler. But if you think of like scallops, flower petals, um, intricate designs like a Madeira applique for instance where you're cutting out the shape and then putting a background fabric underneath the project and stitching. It's otherwise known as reverse applique. This tool really rocks for that. So I'm going to put it in position number four which is the last position. And that is the design complete. Now I'm just going to back out just a bit and let me see if I can just kind of pull this thing out like such. And sometimes you'll get like a little, a little thread or something hanging on. So you just take a little scissor and cut that. And yeah, one, one little guy over here. And let me bring this over to the desk again. Do, 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 do. And so here's the back of the project. Notice I don't have the, um, uh, the initials bleeding through here with the bobbin stitch. Here's the front of it. It did not cut into my um, the blanket stitching, which I asked it not to. So it's doing like really super duper job. And that's the project complete. I mean, how easy was that? Pretty easy. And all I can say is thank you, Bernina, for having cut work in V9 embroidery software.